My name is Ben Bogeen. I am a fire behavior specialist. And as you can see behind me here, I am on a active wildfire. So my role as a fire behavior specialist is to understand how a fire will spread across the landscape. And I do that by understanding the fire behavior triangle. The fire behavior triangle consists of weather, fuels, and topography. And how a fire spreads will depend on that relationship between those three elements. Not every fire spreads the same, and by knowing what a fire will do, I can help give realistic information to operations. My name is Lachlan Noble. I'm a fire behavior specialist in training. So some of the fuel characteristics that we're looking at and how the fire interacts with them is the ability of the fire to build up from the surface fuels and travel up into the canopy and get that critical fire intensity and start moving through trees rather than the understory and fuels on the ground. This block was harvested in 1972. It was burned in 73, and then it was thin, spaced, and brushed after that. In addition to these treatments, we also have these animals behind me, these beautiful cows, that have been grazing in the area. So normally we'd have our grasses come up in here and late into the summer, it would cure and be really receptive for a fast moving, high intensity surface fire that could elevate into the canopy. However, with the grazing going on, we don't have that same grass fuel loading. Where the fire originated, it was a rolling crown fire, high intensity fire, moving through the tr top of the trees, fully consuming fuels from the forest floor to the tops of the trees. As soon as it hit this stand, where it had been thinned and pruned previously. It was unable to continue burning, lost its intensity, and essentially burned itself out in this treatment. When this area burnt, it never reached our canopy. And the reason this never happened is because of all the silviculture treatments that applied to this area. There was burning that removed those surface fuels. There was pruning that you can see behind me that removed those ladder fuels on the trees, meaning the fire couldn't climb up those ladder fuels and elevate to the canopy. And on top of all that, we also had brushing in here, so it removed more of that ladder fuel. So because of these factors, we're in this mature stand that typically we think would be full consumption under these extreme burning days, which much of this fire did see. However, the fire here really remained on the forest floor, which we can see by the scar marks on these trees behind me. We talked a lot about fuel treatments and silviculture treatments and their impact on fire behavior. It's not really a silver bullet though. There are times where things like wind and slope align and intensity builds up enough where anything's gonna burn. And we have a really great example behind me here. We see a mature stand that did have fuel treatments done to it. The stand was burned shortly after it was logged. So surface fuels were removed and this fire still burned with very high intensity and high severity through the area. This area over to my right, the completely burnt area, was 10 years old. And the reason it burned so well is a really open stand, meaning there's good spacing in between the planted trees in there. Where if we look further back, that stand is 15 years old. And in just those five years, it allowed more herbaceous fuels to come up in there. It's more humid within that, it's more dense. It's really hard for that sunlight to get to the forest floor, dry those fuels out, making it hard for fire to establish in there. It also blocks that wind from getting in there and pushing that fire through it. So with these only being five years apart, you see a dramatic difference between these two stands. So we are standing in a burn from 2017. There are two big benefits of doing this. The first one is we can look at historical weather and see what conditions and winds were needed for this fire to transition through this area, as these fuels are representative of the fuels we see over in our current fire. The second benefit is this area burnt very hot. And by doing so, it consumed a lot of the surface fuels which means it will be a great fuel break should our fire ever transition through its current fuels into this location. During my 14 day deployment, I'll get in the field or spend my time analyzing data or validating site conditions. So when I'm asked, will this fire move today? I can answer with confidence, yes or no. And more importantly, is it safe to put resources on this fire? I can say yes with confidence.